Ms. Corla. Minister, ESB's announcement last Friday marked the end of an era of electricity generation in the Midlands. This decision by ESB not to reapply for planning permission to co-fire West Offaly Power and Loch Reed Power will have far-reaching repercussions. Firstly, their own workers. Secondly, Borden and Mona workers who will no longer be needed to harvest peat to supply ESB after 2020. Impacts on them, local business, communities and the local authority will all have significant challenges to manage. This day has been flagged for at least two decades, resulting 15 years ago in the closures of Forban and road power stations. ESB then provided €3 million to each community. I welcome the €5 million Euro commitment to be added to the Just Transition Fund, but surely 15 years later it could be possible for ESB to at least match the sum that they provided 15 years ago, if doubling, which I had hoped they might consider doing, is not possible. The new Forban Business Park benefited from that fund, which in the past was a cow park and a dump. It is now houses a really good business park, well-known uh, Bright Beginnings childcare facility, the expansion of a local business, Brosna Press, and is that me gone? It is. <laughs> uh, Margot, Minister, as you know, the people in the Midlands are still re reeling from the shock news last week, but I believe that this government hasn't handled the matter at all and hasn't act acted accordingly or hasn't planned for the workers. I would just ask you, Minister, the solid fuel carbon tax came into effect in 2013 and of, from 2013 to 2018 it generated just under €100 million. Euro. I would ask for that money to be ring-fenced ring for the benefit of the communities and the workers because what they're being offered at the minute is a drop in the ocean and you're repackaging previous announcements. Nobody's buying it and what we need now is a firm commitment that the workers will be looked after and that communities in Offaly, Longford and other affected regions will be looked after in the Midlands. I am concerned, I have been contacted by a number of workers, seasonal workers who stand to lose a lot of money. They're not being given a fair redundancy package, neither are other workers. And as I said to you earlier in the Chamber, Minister, it's not comparable with their EU counterparts, where Spanish people in the same position are being offered a fair package. And it's just not on, yeah, Minister, and certainly I'll be raising this again. Deputy Barry Khan. Thank you, uh, uh, Minister, notwithstanding my disappointment at on board Pinar's decision, and indeed uh, the government and ESB's response to that, which culminated in, in last week's announcement. Some of the questions I raised yesterday I want to reiterate in the doll. The plants at Shannon Bridge and Lanesborough were put there at a cost of 415 million 15 years ago. We're told that they will now be taken down over a two-year period. You want to ensure that that's not the case. I want you to commit that, that they will be retained and have a use beyond uh, their, their present usage. I also want to ensure that the CEO of Board Namona comes out front and centre with the implications for Borden Amona in relation to Eden Dairy Power Plant, in relation to Darren Lock Brigade Factory, the horticultural sector, and indeed what funds they have for rehabilitation. They claim, according to the books, to have 20 million, you say, PSO will be repurposed to add to that. We want confirmation that the pension has the capacity to meet the demands that will be placed upon it, and what application have they made to the EU and transition funds. I also would like to see a debate on the terms and conditions and the f of, the, of the just transition. I'd like to see a detail debated about the potential to increase the transition fund, commitment to an annual, commitment to the county concerned, and also to include, uh, uh, incorporate the fact that 40 million has been lost to Offaly by, uh, because of rates, and also the statutory instruments in relation to the horticulture uh, sector beyond uh, Board Namona have implications uh, because of the High Court decision that it could impact on a further 4,000 jobs. We need clarification on that. Okay. Minister, as, as, I, as I told you yesterday evening at our meeting in Ballyman, I want to thank the fact that you and your colleagues came down uh, to meet us and meet some of the people. That was important. Um, the economic lifeline is really gone, so it's very, very urgent that the message coming here from all the TDs, irrespective of the county they're coming from, is, is, is listened to and adhered to. Uh, the reality is that economic life done gone. We need assistance. We need help. We need, um, you know, we need extra economic activity. It was brought around from, you know, the county councils coming together through the Leos, and you know, a, an absolute commitment that we that we really put into practice balanced regional development. And finally, because our time is very limited, I really want you to address the issue of this dismantling of the power stations. I am totally opposed to it. It may be in planning, but surely somewhere we can, we can get around that. I think it would be absolutely outrageous to you know, dismantle those uh, power stations. Whether it's from a tourism perspective, we don't know. Maybe we could get gas into places like Lanesborough. They should not be dismantled, and I, I'm asking you to put a stay on that if you can. Thanks for observing your time. Deputy uh, Dennis Norton. 
The key objectives behind the co-firing of West Offaly and Lockery power stations was to rapidly build up demand for indigenously sourced biomass. The principal reason for the lack of biomass is the absence of any proven demand for energy crops that would attract farmers. This led to the rejection of the planning application for West Offaly by Onboard Planola. Minister, before any decision is made on the future of the power plants themselves, we must fully evaluate the possibility and potential for operating our current peat powered plants with 100% locally sourced biomass. This could reduce agricultural emissions on local farms by 600,000 tonnes of carbon each year, equivalent to the removal of 130,000 cars off our road, generating €372 per hectare with a price of carbon at €80 a tonne, creating 4,000 seasonal jobs in harvesting and guaranteeing income to farmers in the Midland counties. The next is Deputy Brain Stanley. Uh, the, news, the news of the two power stations being closed uh, is devastating for the Midlands uh, Minister, and that comes on the back of uh, redundancies over the last 20 years on board the Mona. And I want to mention here there's been a lot of talk about just transition for the Midlands. The Midlands includes Leash. The workers, the former workers on board Nomona and the communities that they come from, there's been no just tran transition for them. And I want you to take note of this. Uh, leash has to be included in the just transition uh, framework. The, the six million being provided and the five million from the ESP, while welcome, it's totally inadequate. It doesn't. It's a drop in the ocean. It won't even create a ripple. Uh, there's a lot of things to be done. There's jobs promised, but the promises around it are vague. There's 100 jobs proposed in rewetting yesterday morning. By yesterday evening, that was 300 was what was being reported. Uh, these are one-off jobs. These are not long-term jobs. Uh, what we need to do is, and it's been mentioned, to convert Shannon Bridge and Loch Ree to biomass. Uh, I've been saying for a long time we need to be growing biomass here in this country to have our own supply chain. There's another 400 jobs being proposed in retrofitting. That's welcome, but the problem is, is that the workers are not trained up to do that. Where do we do that quickly? I'm saying to you again here today, we need to use Mount, expand Mount Lucas Training Centre for that. It's in the Midlands, it's in the heart of Bordenamona country, in the middle of counties like Leash, Offaly, Westmead are all close to it. It should be used for that. There's, there's hundreds of jobs that have been lost over the past 20 years, and I mentioned Board Nomona, uh, cool, the Cool Nomona plant. And I wanted to, to point out to you, as the shareholder representative of the taxpayer there, the Cool Nomona plant is at the crossroads of the country. It's right on the junction of the N7 and N8. It's less than one kilometre from it, and the junction of the N8, N80 as well. This is hugely important. Fantastic location. Sorry, that needs to be utilised, Minister. Deputy, sorry, Deputy Robert Roy. You, do, you didn't remind me, Deputy, you've gone over the time. Confirmation was an absolutely devastating blow to the workers, their families, and the wider community. And, Minister, while I acknowledge you spent uh, Monday listening. Uh, to public representatives, to unions, this needs to be followed through with concrete delivery and substance. Um, what we're looking at now is a 10-year just transition condensed into just over 10 months. We need you to inter intercept, Minister. You need to look at the opportunity of going full bi biomass in one of the plants and the opportunity of extending natural gas from Ballymahan uh, down into Lanesborough. There needs to be full disclosure from Board Namona in relation to what the future holds. Uh, and I want to ask, have you looked at changing the constitution of Board Namona, looking at expanding the remit so that you will be able to guarantee that the workers will be able to be employed in bog re re reclamation, will be able to be employed in home uh, retrofit? Because currently, public procurement prevents you from being able to guarantee those jobs will remain for the employees of Board Namona. Can you confirm in relation to the protection of the pensions of Board Namona and can you in ensure that the expansion of the Just Transition Committee will now take effect uh, people from a wider area than it currently serves? Thanks very much. I just firstly appreciate um, how intense people feel about this, and that's why um, you know, 
I did go down yesterday and I gave the time to meet with unions, with workers, uh, with public reps and indeed some community representatives and there is absolutely no doubt that this is a really difficult time and you know, that, that uh, anger and frustration was very evident. Uh, I suppose what the government is determined to do is to, uh, to deliver a just transition and for me just transition is, is providing alternative employment opportunities that can be sustainable. Um, your piece, yes it was on a, a, an exit as we know but it did expect to be last for longer. We need to create uh, job opportunities that are going to be permanent and can grow rather than be in, in a decline. And that's why I have been working over the last number of months when this possibility first emerged from Board Planola to put together the sort of measures that we saw in the budget that do have a very clear commitment to just transition. 31 million, as you know, allocated. 20 million for the retrofit scheme, 5 million for non-board pneumonia uh, activities on, uh, on uh, restoring bogs to a very high, high standard, uh, 6 million in the Just Transition Fund. In addition to that, as, as I, I said uh, and we discussed yesterday, we ha have been working with the European Union to repurpose the PSO so that we can use money to make sure that board pneumonia uh, can uh, restore bogs to a very high standard and provide that's where 200 jobs would be provided. That's, it's 100 jobs on the non-board pneumonia. That's where the 300 number came from uh, that uh, Deputy Stanley raised. Uh, I, you know, there are many points that have made, been made here and yesterday concerning the, the future of the plant there, concerning uh, you know, the structure of, of, of tendering for, uh, for, the, for uh, business opportunities by board pneumonia. I, will I have taken those back from our, our discussions yesterday and I will be examining those with my officials. Uh, and many other proposals and that's why you know, we did have, take the step of putting in place a just transition commissioner so that we could fully explore the many uh, issues that are being proposed and there are, a, there are a lot of opportunities uh, that are coming up from the community uh, and there are assets available uh, from the, 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 the two companies so there, there, we, I'm determined that we will use this opportunity and I think to recognise uh, as others have done that your just transition isn't for 2020 and that's it. Just transition is a permanent part of our approach to carbon pricing. We've committed uh, as an Oireachtas uh, that we will move to a trajectory to a, a carbon price of 80 euros per tonne and we have been very upfront and honest that all of that money will be ploughed back into helping people make this adjustment. Part of that is just transition for people uh, uniquely exposed, as are, are the board pneumonia workers and, and those working in the peat generation plants. Equally, people who are suffering from power, uh, you know, fuel poverty and people who need to make changes in their lifestyle. We want to harness that uh, and make the Midlands a leading uh, exemplar of how we can move, make this move to a low carbon economy. It's part of what Board of Mona are seeking to do themselves, moving from brown to green, uh, and uh, you know, they have a diversification plan. So we, we need to work th through these, and that's why I think there was you know, several ministers felt the same sense of commitment that I do to make this work uh, for the people of the Midlands. So uh, I, I, I appreciate uh, the frustration and the questions that need answers and we will work through uh, and deliver those answers over the coming weeks and, and months and indeed into the longer term. Because uh, we do recognise that it's a central part of the Climate Action Plan to manage this transition in a fair way to people directly affected. Uh, so we, we will be committing to develop these ideas uh, to the maximum extent possible. Uh, deputies, uh, we're starting with deputies Marcella Cork and Kelly. Th 30, 30 seconds. Thank you very much for your response, Minister. Uh, I just wanted to raise the um, local property tax in Offaly, and I really want to uh, uh, put it on the table here now that they need an increase. They haven't had an increase since 2014. In relation to the Just Transition Commissioner, I'm hoping that he will spend a considerable amount of time in Offaly, if not a, a, to base himself there for a, at least some period of time. And also, Minister, can I extend an invitation to you to visit Shannon Bridge? I think it would be very uh, timely if you could do it as soon as possible. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, 
Sean, the others with 30, 67, 30 seconds. I want to raise the retrofitting with you. These jobs aren't guaranteed, and I know this has been pointed out by your union rep. What we're hearing here is a lot of airy fairy stuff. We need to have solid commitments. We need solid funding committed to. And I would ask you once again to make sure that the carbon tax revenue is ring fenced for the Midlands region, to make sure that our commissioner is on the ground as you proposed in Offaly, particularly where we're very, very badly affected, and also parts of Leash, which will be affected as well as Longford. And also, Minister, I would like to get an update on the application which went into the EU, the coal regions in platform. Uh, that application should have gone years ago. I mean, that started in 2017. It's too late in the day. And while we're trying to do our best here, Minister, you'll need to take responsibility because yeah. this is the most unjust yeah. transition yeah. ever. Yeah. And I, I think it's a sh an insult to call it a just Similarly, transition. 30 seconds. Uh, clarification that you will allow the Dáil debate <coughs> terms of reference and maybe take recommendations from them before agreeing them in their entirety. Uh, is the repurposing of the PSO agreed or not? Because if it's not, you can't say with any definitive uh, value that the 300 jobs that you mentioned associated with it can be committed to. Do you accept that if you don't bring a new legislation to allow the licensing of uh, the harvesting of horticultural peat by the EPA, that there is a huge uh, threat to many more jobs outside uh, Board Namona? And even to confirm that the rehabilitation programme that is envisaged is not contravening the same legislation uh, that the High Court ruled in favour of having, having to be taken Deputy. against the statutory instruments that you brought Deputy. in earlier this year. Deputy uh, Eugene Murphy. Yeah. It's like Larry Gogol's just a minute quiz. It's very quick to see me. But anyhow, we're down to half a minute now. Uh, look at on, 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 on the issue. I'm from, a I'm from a horticultural background myself. Uh, before I went into the media business, but I feel that there's a huge amount of work could be done there, despite some of the cynics saying we couldn't do work on the horticultural business. And I intend to submit a paper on that. But I also think we need to look at an IDA focus on places like Ballinus Law that's going to be badly hit and it surrounds Roscommon Town and Longford. So really, I'm saying, in relation to the IDA Minister, we must up the ante there and get them to take a special interest in the locality. Two plants are both clear of debt and have a remaining 10-year lifespan without any major refit required. And Minister, no decision should be made on decommissioning either plant until all potential future options for the use of those plants are considered. The last thing that we need is a replication of the short-sighted decision to decommission sugar beet processing facilities in Carlow and Mallow, which led to the appalling situation where the vast majority of biofuel used in transport in Ireland is now being imported. Please provide an assurance to the House here this evening on that, Minister. Your Minister is, is to have quality jobs uh, replacing the jobs being lost, and the jobs that have already been lost. Uh, in Board Namona, in Leash and Offaly and the other Midlands counties. I asked you, does, does Cool Namona figure in this just transition or is Leash being written out of it altogether? Offaly has been very, very badly affected by what's happening. Leash has been very badly affected and there will be further job losses there. The biomass, I asked you in relation to the two power plants, uh, Lanesborough and Shannon Bridge, uh, I think it's very, very important that they are not demolished. I think it's very, very important that, they are, that we look at converting those completely to 100% biomass and that we put in place the biomass supply chains, uh, also the training for retrofitting. And just one figure I'll give you, Thank there's you, £430 Deputy. million collected last year in carbon taxes without putting any increase on it. You know, there's £30 Time million in up, total Deputy. going Thank into the Just Transition Fund for the Midlands. Deputy it Troy. seems a small amount. Deputy Troy. Uh, thank you, Ken Corla. Minister, I asked in relation to changing the constitution of Board Namona, uh, because without doing so, you cannot guarantee uh, that the jobs in bog reclamation and housing retrofits will be given to Board Namona staff. Minister Madigan said yesterday in Ballymahan that she's already getting ready to tender out the bog reclamation work. So how can she guarantee that that's going to be for uh, the existing staff of Board Namona? And secondly, can you confirm in relation to the two statutory instruments which the High Court ruled against earlier this year, what impact could they potentially have on the future proposals in relation you, uh, to land or bog reclamation? Minister. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to be able to answer everything, but to the best of my ability, I, I, I will. I mean, I recognise that one of the issues here are around the pressure on, on the rate base of, 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 uh, of, of, of local authorities, and that was discussed yesterday, and it is one we are going to have to look at. Uh, retrofitting, we have committed hard cash to retrofitting. 20 million is there. We will be mobilising the local authorities to be the, the core of that in 2020. And clearly, this is something we want to build in the, fur, in the further regions uh, uh, period. We have been admitted to the coal region platform, and I know the new commission is interested in putting funding through that, so that will be uh, an opportunity for us. I am open to suggestions on the terms of reference, and if the deputies want to put those forward, I'm happy to, to consider those. We've tried to draw them uh, in a broad uh, fashion. Uh, we are very confident that we will get the permission for the repurposing of the PSO, but obviously we have to get that signed. Uh, but uh, we have done a lot of work, and I am confident that we will deliver that. Uh, obviously, the planning permit, the, the PEAT regulations do require uh, those uh, companies to, to uh, apply for uh, substitute planning permission, and that is a requirement and will have to be done. Uh, but Again, you know, that is something that, uh, by having the, uh, the work that we're doing in retrofitting uh, or in restoring bogs, that strengthens the case, I believe. Um, the other uh, opportunities, you know, clearly the ESB are the owners of the plant and have to evaluate its, its future. Uh, there are clearly alternatives as we move to a, a renewable base to have alternative uh, sources of fuel for when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, and clearly that, that is something that ESB will have to evaluate in, if for, for, for this plant as in, in its overall uh, set. Uh, I recognise you know, we need to create opportunities in the Midlands, but obviously, uh, following these two particular announcements, there will be a, ten, a, a concentration on working with people in the short term, uh, those who have been most directly impacted, uh, certainly around retraining, around the opportunities to, to switch into the, these new employment uh, opportunities that we're developing. I think to build that bridge, we will have to concentrate particularly on, on areas where workers who have been directly affected are, 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 are located. Uh, but of, co of course, uh, your just transition is, uh, is something that we will be continuing to pursue, and I recognise the wider impact in the Midlands. Thank you very